player as well. All right, let's take a look at where these two teams come from. Not hard to figure out, both from the Omaha metro area. Marion is in Omaha, Papillion La Vista just south of the largest city in the state. How do they get to the state championship match? And who do they have to beat to get here? Well, Omaha Marion knocked off, well, Omaha didn't knock off North Platte State. North Platte State Pats, but. Back at the Nebraska Coliseum in Lincoln, Nebraska for the Class A state championship battle. The Omaha Marion Crusaders taking on the Papillion La Vista South Titans. The Titans come in at 36 and four, the Crusaders at 41 and one. Hello again, everybody. I'm Larry Putney along with former Husker Kathy Wieskamp. Also joining us, Rachel Schwartz this, this afternoon as the Class A battle, one of the marquee battles here in the state championship, Omaha Marion taking on the South, and we're talking about Nebraska recruits, both teams have Husker recruits in the game. We'll start with Omaha Marion. We talked about Lauren Seekman a little bit. She truly is one of those special athletes with signing with Nebraska or committing to Nebraska as just a sophomore. Right, I mean, again, she knew where she wanted to go and, and Cook is interested in her as well, and so it's a great fit. But again, as you watch her out on the floor, she gets things done, she's doing a great job, she leads this team, she sets, she hits, she's aggressive, she's a great defensive player as well. All right, let's take a look at where these two teams come from. Not hard to figure out, both from the Omaha metro area. Marion is in Omaha, Papillion La Vista just south of the largest city in the state. How do they get to the state championship match? And who do they have to beat to get here? Well, Omaha Marion knocked off, well, Omaha didn't knock off North Platte State Pats, but Omaha Marion won their first game 3-0, then they knocked off Bellevue East 3-0. Papillion La Vista South knocking off Papillion La Vista knocking up Southwest in the first match, then Elkhorn in the second. Both teams have swept their way to this championship match. And now for the introductions of the teams, let's go to our public address announcer, Steve Lemon. On behalf of the Nebraska School Activities Association, welcome to the 2009 NSAA Volleyball Championships. The Class A final is between the Papillion La Vista South Titans and the Omaha Marion Crusaders. And now let's meet the teams. First, the Titans from Papillion La Vista South. Number one, Katie Ralston. Number two, Taylor Wynn. Number three, Kelly Hunter. Number four, Megan Stroyek. Number five, Amber Ralston. Number seven, Kirsten Hudgens. Number nine, Nicole Edgar. Number 10, Katie Kurtz. Number 11, Lauren Polacek. Number 12, Whitney Costal. Number 13, Rachel Nelson. Number 14, Bailey Vance. Number 15, Kylie Meinzer. And number 17, Jen Cushing. The assistant coaches are Julie Cooley, Ashley Hulting, Cindy Obermeyer, and Jill O'Donnell. The head coach for the Titans is Gwen Egbert. Here are the Omaha Marion Crusaders. Number one, Jordan Wilson. Number two, Molly Pettit. 
Number three, Lauren Siekman. Number four, Kate Elman. Number five, Julianne Mendolfo. Number six, Mel McCormick. Number seven, Morgan Ogerzali Eaton. Number eight, Franny Fuxa. Number nine, Andrea Spostat. Number 10, Ellie Pesavento. Number 11, Maggie Emoti. Number 12, Michaela Pettit. Number 13, Maggie Heim. And number 14, Ashley Jansen. The assistant coaches are Matt Williams, Rhonda Monikowski, and Katie Mihal. The head coach for the Crusaders is Rochelle Rolfs. Our officials for this afternoon's match are Vicki Hamm and Nikki Huffman. Let's play volleyball! So we're ready for the Class A state championship battle between the Marion Crusaders and the Papillion La Vista South Titans. Two teams that know a little bit about each other. They've squared off a few times. Marion has come out on top each time these two teams have battled. And they're very familiar with each other, you said. And both of them will be well coached, um, very clean, very disciplined in their um, skills as you see them out on the court. So we're going to see two very strong teams squaring off here for this Class A state championship. And we'll have Marion's only loss on the year coming at the hands of Elkhorn, which made the Class A state semifinals. They've knocked off the play in La Vista South three times this year, 2-1 very early in the season, then about midway through the season it went five, playing La Vista South losing 3-2, and then the final time was just before the state tournament began, it was also a 3-2 battle that the Marion Crusaders came out on top. So each time, the first time they played was in a tournament, so 2-1 is as many games as you can play, it's a race to two, so each time they played it went the limit. 3-2, 3-2, and 2-1. And as is the case with any young team, Gwen Egbert has a very young team here, a couple of freshmen in the starting lineup, as you know. They continue to get better and see a greater amount of improvement from Correct. beginning of the year to end of the year. And I think Gwen feels, and in talking with Michelle Rolfs, they both feel like their teams are playing as well as they have all season long. So we expect nothing but a five game match here right, <laughs> between right. these two. That's the trend so far. We expect the same probably to happen here. In case you're just tuning in, this morning's match in Class C1 between SCOTUS and Central Catholic, won by SCOTUS, knocking off unbeaten Central Catholic. That went five and then just completed in Class D2. Greeley Wallback knocked off Clay Sitter, also in five sets. So we expect it again today and here to start things off, Andreas Spostak for the Marion Crusaders. We're underway in the Class A state championship. Right away, the swing from Megan Stroyek. Siegman with the quick block back. Taylor Wynn there to shut it down. It's fast tempo. You're going to see a lot of fast tempo here as we go. A lot of quick swings, a lot of transitions that are going to happen in a very fast pace. On the slide. Pesavito blocked back. Kept alive. Siegman goes outside. McCormick and out. McCormick with the kill. Big swing by McCormick. She comes in. She drives that ball around the outside hands of the block. Just quick. You can see she actually beats the block up and gets it around. Into the net. Well, serve goes into the net. 2-1 Titans here early on. Now to the match for Papillion La Vista South. First in Hudgens. Hudgens, a member of that team that made it here last year for the state championship match. First they lost to Papillion La Vista. And then Gina Mancuso led team. Back row block again, ball goes over the tape, the setter goes up trying to make the set, gets in the way basically, 
and is it considered a block attempt illegal? Well, here's Hudgens with the serve. In the middle. Wrist away and down. Good swing by McCormick from the back row. Just catches that sideline, does a nice job cutting it away around the block. McCormick, 10 kills in the semifinals. Second on the team with 265 kills on the year. She's a 5-7 senior outside hitter. Jump serve there for McCormick. Right down the middle comes the freshman. There's your first look at Amber Rolfson, the 6-2 freshman outside hitter already committed to attend the University of Nebraska. And yes, she is a freshman. She looks like a seasoned veteran out there on the court. And again, just continuing to get better. She's still not at her peak potential. Good serve by Rolson as she now moves to the back row and her sister, Katie, comes in in the front row and that gets right by her for the kill for Marion. Siegman again, just coming in, blasts through that. She's just so quick with the attack, is able to catch those holes, beat the block. Marion will run a 6-2 offense. Siegman will set and Jordan Wilson will also come into set. Wilson in there now in the back row. That's her putting the ball up kept alive. Let's see what they do with the free ball here. They go outside to the other Rolfson into the net. That was Katie Rolfson. Katie leads this team in kills. 417 on the year. A little over aggressive there and into the top of the tape. All even at four. And Juliana Mandolfo. In back line ace Mandolfo. Cushing wasn't sure. She thought it was going to be out. Made the decision to let it go. And just a lot of top spin on this ball. Drops it right inside the baseline. Right on that line, Mandolfo on her way to Creighton to play collegiate volleyball. Pushed back. Off the block and out. And the kill goes to Kelly Hunter. Kelly Hunter getting the hands of the block. You can see right here, she just catches that hand. 5-5, five, five. back to serve now for the Titans. Nicole Edgar, the junior. Good pass on the slide from Taylor. Look at it, Wilson. Outside, Rolfson. Wow, what a swing. She just got a lot of power, and again, at 6-2, that arm and that reach. She also jumps real well, so she gets up off the floor, adding to the high contact point. A lot of eyes were opened around the state when John Cook offered two scholarships to freshman twins Prior. in the Omaha area before <laughs> they entered high school. They had never played a high school match, and they were already committed verbally to play collegiate volleyball at the University of Nebraska. But you can see here the level of skill with which Katie and Amber Rolfson play, certainly deserving of those scholarships. Bad pass into the antenna. Titans up by three. Wilson sets the middle. Siegman is dug. Outside of Rolfson rolls it over. Goes back to Siegman. Siegman kept it alive off the block. Wynn got a hand on that. Other side, Kelly Hunter. Kept up. Rolson rolls it over. Tough ball to handle, but they did. Yeah, very aggressively. She goes right after it. Again, Rolson. Great dig. Mandolfo, the libero, puts it back. Point, Marion. Mandolfo's got a job for her today, digging balls. She gets this one. Doesn't keep it on her side, but... Very nicely places it in the deep corner. A lot of energy, you can tell both teams. A lot of excitement here. A lot of adrenaline flowing. Here's Lauren Siegman, the 5'10 sophomore setter and outside hitter for Marion, serving. Good dig there by Siegman, kept alive. Pushed across. Outside, Rolfson. Off the block and out, another kill by Rolson. Again, great use. She saw the blockers were there, and you can see that she swings at the ball. She rotates it out of bounds. Her swing actually falls through out of bounds, taking it off the block. Here's 
Good job by Siegman to get a bump set on that. Spostad tried to get it down, and Olsen swing again goes off the block of Ogrezali Eaton and out of bounds. Here you get a chance to look at it again. Again, using the block to the advantage. You don't always have to go over it. You can use it. It's hard to control as a blocker, those hands. Pounded away by Andreas Spostat, and Spostat with the kill. The junior middle for Omaha Marion. Nice slide run there by the Crusaders. So 10-7 here in set number one, Titans up by three. There's Katie Elman to serve. Off the top of the block and down, another kill by Katie Rolfson. That's four already for the freshman. Here they use it, they bring around in that kind of a tandem, they one quick and she comes in and falls up right behind with the swing. Bailey Vance now with the jump serve is long. Service error by the Titans. Bostad now back to serve. Pushed outside. Rolfson, good angle. That's Amber. Amber. Amber's moved in. A great set there by Kelly Hunter. Really gets the ball to Rolfson in a great position. Getting there, driving hard, cutting it under the blocker's hand. Outside, McCormick can't get it down. Back to Rolfson, Amber, that's looked like a touch. They called the touch, kill. So now Amber Rolfson with three kills, sister Katie with four. Quite a one-two punch with those two girls on the outside, and it's, you've got to really pay attention as they switch, as they come through there, because they do have a little variation in swings. Not a lot, though. Well, a great dump by Siegman. Siegman just, sorry, just has a feel there. You could just tell she thought, felt she was very good about decoying it as well. Siegman, an outstanding semifinal match. 13 kills, 16 assists, nine digs, nearly a triple-double for Lauren Siegman, another Nebraska recruit who just committed prior to this season beginning. So she's a sophomore. Two more years after this to play high school ball and is already committed to play at Nebraska. Many people around Nebraska will know the Siegman name, especially if you're into golf. Her father, Tom, former PGA professional, won a stop on the PGA Tour. Now a teaching professional in Omaha. Off the top of the block. Nice long rally here. Outside, Rolfson. Off the hand of Pesavento. And Rolfson, another kill. We'll give that one to Amber. Pesavento is there, strong hands up. She's really working hard to seal, but again, Rolfson just power and blasts it back. She's just so strong. So Rochelle Rolfs will take a timeout. The Crusaders trail the Titans. It's 14-9 in set one of the Class A state championship match. NET coverage of the NSAA High School Volleyball Championships is brought to you in part by NPPD, Nebraska Public Power District, applauding the dedication, teamwork, and sportsmanship of Nebraska's high school athletes. By the Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nebraskasoybeans.org. And by Time Warner Cable, inspiring young people to build the skills they need in science, technology, engineering, and math to become the problem solvers of tomorrow. Now this was the goal for the Crusaders when the season started, make it to the Coliseum. Warren Seekman said, I want to get a head start in my career playing on that floor. I want to get used to what it's going to be like to be down there. Of course, Seekman says she's the Warren that stayed. <laughs> Referring to her former teammate and the juniors, Lauren Cook, coach of, uh, daughter of Coach John Cook, who went to UCLA. Chuckles when she says that. Awful boy, what a great up by Jennifer Cushing, the libero for the Titans. Cushing got to that one as well. Great pass outside of Wolfson. Big swing and a nice dig by Jordan Wilson. Pushed across and a kill by Mel McCormick, her second. 
Mel McCormick just sneaking it over there. But she's so quick. She gets to the ball fast with that hand and really tries to get and gets it through there usually before the block is set. Fourteen ten Titans. On the slide. Rachel Nelson couldn't get it down. Block back. Amber Rolfson get up there. Big block up in the front row. One on one matchup. She penetrates the net so far. And by reaching across the net, you cover so much more area. You take away the angles of the attack. Great players play big in the big moments. Here in front of them. Pack Coliseum, the Class A state championship. You'd expect to see some terrific performances. And there's Kelly Hunter from the outside. Hunter also just a, a great athlete out on the court. She's going to be a player you're going to see. She makes plays happen out there. She swings away. She also runs system and sets the ball. Keep an eye on her as well. Another freshman for the Titans. Hunter and the Rolfson twins. Significant playing time. All three freshmen. So how great would that to be to have three freshmen of that caliber coming into your program? And Papillion La Vista South was here in the finals last year, so they've just added to like their program. It, like what it does is make Gwen Egsberg job easy. <laughs> <laughs> so appreciate it saying that. Well, last year in the Class A Finals, it was a battle of Papillion schools. As one loss, Papillion La Vista played their rival from Crosstown, Papillion La Vista South Titans. Let's look back at last year's Class A state title game. And this afternoon in Class A, it's an all Papillion La Vista battle. They go back row, Mancuso, back line. She finishes it in game number one. Outside the Brant. So touches the top of the tape and block back. Alvarez is blocked. Fikin will go to Mancuso again. And an ace. Tice is now nearing 20. It's crucial for the Monarchs. Vance blocked back, open floor. Within one. Set and match point Monarchs. This for a state championship. Block back, Mancuso put it away. Monarchs back to back state champs. And now their battery mates from in town trying to get it done as Papillion La Vista South in this state championship match last year. Back again this season trying to win it, but with a little more firepower this year. Outside Pettit. Free ball. Into the net. Got net. A, yeah, I got a little anxious with that free ball. A lot of times when you get a free ball, you want to push tempo, so you push it up there at a little flatter angle. A little bit tight there. Catches the net. Served by Amber Rolfson into the net. Eighteen eleven, set one, a seven point advantage for the Titans. Here's Julianne Mendolfo to serve. Also into the net. She's an aggressive, puts a lot of top spin, a lot on that ball, and again when you're a little aggressive like that, sometimes you catch that in tape. Nicole Edgar back into the match to serve. And Edgar's service long back to back to back service errors nobody likes to see that mm. and in the rally scoring that's just you're just giving points away so now Lauren Siegman back to serve Siegman already considered one of the top setters in that 2012 class the kill on the outside Hunter again her second Kill of the match. You can see she's back. She does a nice job driving again. She beats the block. She finds that seam and goes right through it. Largest lead of set number one for the Titans. They're on top by eight at 2012, five away. On the slide, call the touch. Spostat with the kill. Here you can see Spostat comes around on that slide. Um, works the hands of the blockers. A slide is really hard to block. You can make that contact point so many places along that trajectory. Yeah. 
Sequin pushes outside to McCormick. McCormick into the antenna. No touch there, went right into the antenna. The Titans with the point. Here, get a chance to look at that again. Trying to slip it down, down that line. Just turns it a little too far. Bailey Vance serves. Stad block back. McCormick rolls the shot over. Off the block and out. Kill Megan Strait. Strike, nice job. She gets hard off the net. I really like she got in great position to drive to that ball on the back side. Strike, just a sophomore. This is still a very young team. <laughs> you keep saying freshman, sophomore. Very, very youthful squad out on the floor. Spots down on the slide just wide, maybe by a foot. South now two points away. Quick middle. Bostad can't get it down. Orgazali Eaton at the net took a swipe at it and it fell. And just in the right place, she was solid in her base position, was ready to punch it right back as it came up to her. Outside, Rolfson blocked. Pesavento there to shut it down. Pesavento does a great job there getting close. The earlier she was, wasn't was quite there, and can you see how she reaches in her hand, still in um, solid position, even though her feet weren't quite there. A little off pace ball by Stroik, and she gets her second kill. Strike just kind of sneaking in on the backside here. She gets off and has a nice approach. Set point number one for the Titans. On the slide, tip across, kept alive. Mary kept it alive again. Swing there is wide. And Papillion La Vista South, the Titans, have taken set number one. So the Rolfson twins account for eight kills in set number one. And the Titans are on top, 1-0.
NET coverage of the 2009 NSAA High School Volleyball Championships is brought to you in part by U.S. Bank, committed to customer service through performance, products, and people. U.S. Bank, proud sponsor of the Nebraska School Activities Association, member FBIC. By Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska, one less thing to worry about. And by Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, grants, and college planning services. Back at the Coliseum, the Class A State Championship. Set number one goes the way of the Titans. Thanks to a couple of terrific performances by Katie and Amber Rolfson. Four kills each. Seekin pushes outside to McCormick. Great dig by Bailey Vance. Rolfson. Nice dig. Mandolfo. Both Liberos playing well. Rolfson, low shot. Good coverage by McCormick. Quick in the middle. Put away. Spotstad. It looks like Marion's made an adjustment. Spotstad really just gets in there quick. It wasn't real high, but she does a great job getting her hand on the ball. You can see she's waiting, waiting, waiting. Gets up hard. Goes after it. If you look at these two teams, Marion is really middle dominated. They really push their middles. They try and force their offense in the middle. Try and run that quick tempo. And as you, we saw in set number one, Papillion La Vista South, the outsides are really key for them. They really get most of the swings. Ellie Pesavento on the slide. Pesavento going to UNK to play collegiate volleyball. All Metro last season. She had eight kills in the semifinal. And that's in for a kill. Tyler Wynn does up quick. Again, the tempo of play here is very quick, very fast. Trying to beat blockers, catch off the edges of blockers or holes or late blocks. So 2-1 here in set number two. After the first set went the way of the Titans, 25-15. Boy, great dump try by Siegman. And down. Good coverage by Pesavento to knock it down. Siegman really very quiet. She decoys very well that. She kind of flips it over there at last second. You, she doesn't indicate or telegraph at all that she's going to do that. Jordan Wilson now to serve. On the slide. Rachel Nelson can't get it to, to fall. Other side, Siegman blocked back. It would have been out, but it landed right on Siegman after she fell. Came right back at her so quick. Rolfson was up there. Again, it just ricocheted back in the lap of Siegman. On the slide. Outside. Rolls right along the top of the net. And Amber Rolfson with another kill. Off of the hands of a block. On a great roll. Jump serve. Hudgens into the net. Jump serves again a lot of times high reward, but also high risk. Just got to make a, sure you have a balance when you're being aggressive. There's Mel McCormick, the 5'7 senior outside hitter. Wilson back row. Good dig by Wilson. Seekman tries to swing outside. Set a little too outside the antenna. A little wide, that fast low, pay, low set, pushing it wide, gets out there real quick. And Robson was still too wide. Jump serve of McCormick. And the ace. McCormick with 10 kills in the semifinals. Second on the team in kills for the season, pulls out the ace here. McCormick, by the way, she's headed to college also on an athletic scholarship. She'll go to UNO and play soccer. She's a great athlete, Mel McCormick. Another overpass. South was lucky not to have that land in her face. Outside. Rolfson with the swing. 
Back line, Rolfson with another kill. She's just going right in that one, right over the top of the block. And her height, her contact point, again, is so high with a long arm, jumps well, gets over the top. Blocked. Double block there. Kelly Hunter there. Hunter Rachel Nelson. and Nelson both, again, do a great job on the setup. Hunter, setup is key. And then great work to close by Nelson. Rolfson's swing is long. No touch. 7-5, Marion. Mandolfo's jump serve. Off the tape. Outside, just wide by Kelly Hunter. Just wide, she didn't miss that by much. She's really swinging there at cross court, working that setting position coming across. You can see, trying to catch the setter, making her dig the ball. A jump serve by Mandolfo. Right down the middle, right between the block goes Katie Rolfs and her fifth kill. Right there, in, as you said, there's a hole, and she found it, threaded the needle. You can see both blockers there, but Rolfs, excuse me, Rolfson goes right between them. Last time these two teams met was in the Metro Conference Tournament Championship. Turned out to be a terrific match. Went five, Marion won it. Crusaders taking their first Metro Conference Tournament Championship in 10 years. We have to go back to 99. It was also the last time Marion won a state championship. All right over the top of the block. And another kill by Katie Rolfson. Katie Rolfson again, just really doing a tremendous job up at the net, swinging away. She comes in with a lot of power, high contact, doesn't give you a lot of room to breathe. Outside block, again, Megan Stroyak there. Stroyak does a great job, she's in here. Let's watch again. So look at how far across she's reaching across the net. That's key. Now Kelly Hunter will serve. Good top spin served by Hunter on the slide. Spostat with the kill. Andrea Spostat, they've really starting to loosen up here on the backside as she comes around on that slide. The blockers stopped her early. Here she's using them now for her advantage. Marion up by two at 10-8. Two hits. Two hits called on Katie Rolfson. It went off the hand of Jennifer Cushing, the libero, off of the knee of Katie Rolfson, <laughs> popped straight up in the air, and Rolfson thought she could hit it again. She hit it one more time, called for a double hit. Again, just automatic response. I don't know that anybody else would have got to it. So, but again, it was still a play, playable ball. Outside of Rolfson again, that goes into the net. A little off the net, needs to make some adjustment there. Can't hit it down quite as sharp when you come off the net. So Marion with the four point advantage and Gwen Egbert wants a timeout. 12-8, Crusaders leading over the Titans. NET sports coverage of the 2009 NSAA High School Volleyball Championships is proudly brought to you in part by NPPD, Nebraska Public Power District, generating electricity with a balanced mix of energy resources, including wind. Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nebraskasoybeans.org. And by Time Warner Cable, providing cable, internet, and digital phone service for your home or your business. So back at the Nebraska Coliseum, the Marion Crusaders on top of the Titans, 12-8 here in set number two. First set, one by South, 25-15, on the strength of eight total kills by the Rolfson Twins. 
It's slowed a bit here in the second set, and Marion is taking advantage. Gwen Egbert calls timeout. Marion's middles also have become more effective. They were really quieted, and were actually making some errors of their own, unforced errors in set number one. But here they made an impact here and getting some kills for points. Off the touch, another kill by Katie Rolfson. Going out the high hands of Hudgens, or excuse me, off the hands of Ogres, Ogres Ogres Ali Eden. Eden, sorry. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to say that incorrectly. Back row swing by Cushing. Now outside. Ogrizali Eaton can't get it to go. Other way. No touch and long by Stroyer. The 13 9 Crusaders. McCormick right there to meet at the net overpass. Again, strong serve is critical there in, in setting that up. But again, McCormick right there to stop it. Gwen Egbert going to the bench. Bring in Lauren Palachek. Sophomore DS. Another right at her in the serve. Pushed outside, a roll shot. Rolfson with another kill. Amber Rolfson, seven kills now to match her sister Katie. Here you can see again, just the contact point. She's just above this blocker's hands and really going at the high hands of the blockers. Rizal Eaton blocked back and a lift call. Eaton with the kill. There's a look at Tom Siegman, father of Lauren Siegman, of course, Tom won a PGA title back on the tour. I think it was the late 80s. Tom won his PGA stop. Off the block and out. You can just uh, get a lot of power on the outside. You can see they just drive um, hard to the ball. And that's a really, Coach Egbert really concentrates on being explosive and powerful as you attack the ball. Right, a good swing by McCormick and a great reaction by Jim Cushing to get it back over. Siegman can't get it down. Now Rolfson blocked, but out of bounds. Rolfson, another kill. She's racked up nine kills already. Nice little stretch here as she goes through the front row to push the ball to her on the outside. Siegman there gets a hand on it, but it has to turn that outside hand in. It just re reacted, excuse me, rebounded out of bounds. Little roll shot kill there by Ellie Pesavento. Pesavento in the front row now, again, mixing it up, coming in. She likes to come more that three position where um, they've been going around behind on the slide with Spostat. So now McCormick serve again. Outside to Hunter. Hunter goes off the block, right off the hands of Pesavino, and Hunter with her third kill. There's a look at Amber Rolfson. You know, the Rolfson twins, although they're just freshmen, had committed to Nebraska prior to Lauren Sequin committing to Nebraska. Lauren committed just before the start of her sophomore year. The twins committed back in June prior to their freshman year in high school. So when uh, the Rolfson twins have been doing a little work on Sequin to convince her that she needed to be playing in Nebraska as well. So when she did commit to Coach Cook, went home and called the Rolfson twins right away to let them know. And so it's fun for them too to be here in this finals. 
Um, right. <laughs> and having the opportunity, I think Seekman called the twins, or texted, I guess, yeah. the twins, and said, we're going to win. And they texted right back, no, we're going to win. And so <laughs> a fun rival rivalry between the two of them. But again, soon in their future, teammates here on the same floor. Edgar serves into the net. 18-14, Crusaders still up. We talked about that match for the Metro Conference Championship between these two teams. Terrific match, it went into the fifth, and actually the Titans led it 14-12. But Marion rattled off four straight points to win the championship 16-14. Again, another example. <laughs> Of why, right. why, why we should expect to be here for the long haul. That's right. Why we're going to be here for the long haul. <laughs> Punched across. Great up and over. It's set by Hunter. Just long, no touch. Oh, they do call a touch. Called the touch. Rochelle Rolfs is off the chair. What's an explanation? You get a chance. See, it's hard to see from that angle. Our up official overruled. Vicki Ham, the up official, saw the touch, called it. And the block. Because of, excuse me, yeah, spa stat there to seal it off, cut that hard angle. That's a shot that um, Katie Rolfson likes. She likes to take that hard angle inside. Sealed it up. Ogrizali Eaton there with Spostat to put it down. 19-16 now. Crucial point of the match and not what you want at the crucial points. Now the Titans within two. Back into the game. For South is Bailey Vance. Vance, the junior outside hitter. Quick middle, spot stat blocked. Good block, Taylor win there along with Megan Stroyek. Here you get a chance to see again. Win really does a nice job coming in, closing. Big block. So it's 19-18. Titans have cut the lead. We're in set number two of the Class A state championship match. Now for those friends and family that couldn't make it to this afternoon's game, they can now watch all the volleyball coverage live on NET's website by logging on to netnebraska.org forward slash sports and clicking on the live streaming link. And just a reminder, if you have friends or family or loved ones who can't get NET maybe out of the state, make sure to have them log on and watch it online. There's family. I'm sure if Tom wasn't here watching his daughter Lauren, he'd be Logging on to NAT Sports if he were out of state and couldn't have access to it, he'd be watching it online. Right now watching his daughter's team up by one here in set number two, 1918. As the Crusaders drop set number one, 25-15. A great serve. Bump set. Outside to Rolfson, that's blocked back though, we group. Outside to Rolfson again. Great dig in the back row, Kate Elman gets it up. And the kill in the middle. Twenty eighteen now, two point advantage for the Crusaders. Back to serve goes Spostat. Spostat just a junior, she has several Division I offers at the middle, and the ace for Spostad. Big serve there, that's, you know, again, passing is critical, we talked about it, but we're at that critical point in the mat, in the game. 20 is the marker, you gotta really be focused. So a timeout called by Gwen Egbert. Well, you can get a copy of this match as well. It's available on DVD for just $19.95, plus shipping and handling. You see on your screen how to order, call 1-800-868-1868, or you can go to netnebraska.org forward slash sports. Be sure to specify, let us know what school or class when you order by phone, 
DVD once again, just $19.95, and you can get it by calling that number or logging on to netnebraska.org forward slash sports. This looks to be a good one to have on DVD. Now look at look at some Huskers right there. There's Corey Cooper and Hannah Worth as well, looking at future teammates. Now, of course, Corey will leave after this year, but Hannah Worth will certainly be a teammate of Lauren Secret. I think it would be Lauren's freshman year. Hannah Worth would be a senior. Yeah. Right, so, right, yep. correct. Had to think too, I was calculating. Off the top of the block. They're probably no doubt thinking, wow, those freshmen look pretty good. Little miscommunication on the floor for the Titans. And a substitution. Polichek coming back in for the Titans. Out goes Bailey Vance. So now it's a four-point advantage for the Crusaders. Outside. Right between the block, and she terminates. Great swing by Amber. Ogrizali Eaton steps in, but again, the tempo of the ball is just too fast for middle to get close. Pesavesto not quite there in time. McCormick blocked. Stroyak again with the block. Rachel Nelson comes in too, gets in there, works hard. Look how hard she's busting to that outside. And just throws those hands up just at the last second to stop it at the tape. Ace! The Titans have scored three straight. Jennifer Cushing. 22-21, they're back to within one. On the slide. Acevedo can't get it down. Great up, McCormick. Good coverage by Kelly Hunter, but she's called for two hits. Actually, on the second touch, it was called for two hits. Yeah. Can't be called for two hits on a first touch. 23-21. And back to serve for the Marion Crusaders goes Jordan Wilson. Into the game, Bailey Vance for the Titans. Crusaders two away from evening it as set a piece. Outside. Good swing. Rolfson, they track it down. Great hustle. Love the pursuit. Quick in the middle. Kill. Just a little bit different pace, went to a different spot, and Nelson delivers. But great job because Marion's pursuing that ball all the way into the seats. Look at this. Just a great effort. They are not back in position. Papillion South chooses to run that fast tempo, catches them before they're ready. And back to within one, and the service error at a crucial point. Hudgens trying to be aggressive, trying to get the ball right where she wants it. Set point for Marion, 24-22. McCormick will serve for it. Passes off a bit. Marion gets a free ball out of it. Not much they're going to be able to do with it. They push outside. Good dig cushion. Freshman. Seekman back line, Lauren Seekman delivered the set winner for the Crusaders. Started off to be a great one, and we expect it to be the whole way through. First set goes the way of the Titans. The Crusaders come back to take set number two. We're all even at one apiece.
Back at the Coliseum on the campus of the University of Nebraska for the Class A state championship battle between Papillion La Vista South and Marion. We're all even at a set apiece. You see Marion leads in kills. Um, just, well, excuse me, um, the Titans lead in kills just by a few, seven to 20. Again, the Rolf sisters on the outside have really accumulated most of those. Look on down the stats. I guess the other one that stands out for me is the, uh, the blocks. The Titan block has been effective, and that was pretty much early on in set number one. They really slowed the middles of Marion down, but it's so far in set two, Marion's middles have become much more active, appearing different places, being more effective. And a balanced scoring attack for both teams as the Rolfson twins lead all with Amber with 10, Katie with eight. It's a bit more balanced on the Marion mm -hmm. side with Lauren Siegman, Spostat, Pesavento, all three, four, and five kills. We talked about Andrea Spostat. Several Division I offers for the junior middle from Marion. She has a year to mull it over and consider what she might do after the next volleyball season. Underway here in set number three. A good block. Pesavento is, she's blocked both sides, the antenna back in the middle, here back in transition. That's all her. <laughs> that Pesavento, whole... <laughs> very active in that play. Doing a great job. I mean, again, blocking antenna to antenna, and then finishing up with a quick transition in. Finding a way to get a hand on the ball. Spostat serve. Outside, Rolfson off the block. And another kill for Amber Rolf. That's 11 kills now for Amber. The hands there, Pesavento is there. She did a great job getting close, but her hands are still going out as she's traveling out. She's just got to push those back to the center of the court and she'll get that block. Top of the block, kept alive. Rolfson again, wide. Trying to change it up, trying to go that line shot. A lot of times when you do something, I mean, the easiest shot to hit is that driving shot across court. So that line shot, you gotta be disciplined, keep the hand up, and avoid the antenna too. That also, sent, a lot of times you tend to swing too far across the body. 2-1 Crusaders in the Class A State Championship match. If you're just joining us, two champions already crowned today. Greeley Wallback in Class D2 this morning in C1 SCOTUS. Columbus Scotus upsets Grand Island Central Catholic. The Crusaders had come in unbeaten on the year, 35 and 0, and John Peterson's Scotus squad came out with the state championship and the victory. Of course, we're here at the Nebraska Coliseum for the second year in a row. Next year, this championship moves to Grand Island. So that'll really definitely be a change for everyone. And, you know, people traveling, the community of um, Grand Island and Hastings is also involved in that. So a lot of changes going next year. Um, so these kids, again, we've been on this floor. It's pretty exciting to be here on this floor, to be in any state championship. But this is where the Huskers play. It's a neat opportunity. So this group is excited to have that chance. The last time it was bid on, there were three bids. Omaha bid on it, I believe. Mm -hmm. Lincoln as well as Grand Island. Grand Island won the bid using that the new Heartland Event Center. They will certainly do a phenomenal job mm -hmm. with it. They have it for two consecutive years, so they will have it next year and the following year. But Just for a lot of these players, they talk about mm -hmm. the thrill of being able to play at the Nebraska Coliseum. Yeah, and sometimes this is held at Pershing Center. Same thing, right. you know, it's a different venue. But again, doesn't not to take anything away from that, but this is the Coliseum. The banners are hanging. The Huskers play on this floor. All those neat things. Um, definitely fun for the kids if you ask them to. That's a neat part about um, getting to this championship match. And they talk about that as well. And again, representatives from Grand Island here this week, taking a look at tournament sites, understanding what everybody would like to see at a state championship, talking with the competitors as well as the NSAA personnel, the media, learning exactly and, how they want things to be set up. Right, they've gone out to the ven different venues that have hosted the state tournament, have kind of seen how that works, 
you know, having the tournament spread at different sites. They're really working hard to, to be prepared, get as much information and knowledge as they can so that they are ready next season as it moves out there for the first time. Kelly Hutter with another kill in the middle. Hutter with her fourth kill of the match. Pulls the Titans to within two. Back to serve goes Kirsten Hutchins. Outside the antenna. Tried to run the slide with a pass that was a little bit off. Tough to run a slide with that pass. The intent was to everything's happening on the left side. Let me try and shoot it off to the right side and, and catch him off guard. But he's got a little like, overzealous as she pushed outside. Serve is long by Hudgens. Six four, Crusaders on top by two. They came back and won set number two, 25 to 22. Outside of the losses that South has suffered at the hands of Marion, they haven't lost a match since, as that's wide, since the opening day of the season. First day of the season, I believe they lost to Bellevue East in a tournament. And since then, it's only the losses to Marion. That is correct. And Bellevue East oh, in that opening tournament mm -hmm. of the season. And then since then, the only losses to Marion. And that's three losses. The last two went five games. Marion won both three to two. Marion called into the net there as they get a bit tangled up in the transition. So 7-5 now. Crusaders up. Back to serve. Amber Rolfson. Two hits. Called on McCormick. Just some confusions. Players kind of bumping into each other, but Again, both are playing aggressive, stepping in, trying to make the play. Just got to communicate. Use your voice as well as your body with being aggressive. A lot of eyebrows raised when John Cook offered the scholarships to two eighth graders, essentially. <laughs> he uh, talked to them right during camp, I think, in the offseason, and let both of them know whenever you're ready to commit, there's a scholarship waiting for you at Nebraska City. Both Katie and Amber said it really took them by surprise. They thought it was obviously a dream and a goal of theirs was to someday play at Nebraska. That's a great angle taken by Katie there for her ninth kill. You see it again. But after camp, you mentioned that there's a scholarship waiting. They went home and talked about it. They said, this has been our dream our entire life. This is always what we wanted. Why are we waiting? Let's call them up and say, yes, we want to go to Nebraska. <laughs> How, how many kids would love to be in that situation, you know, and again. Uh, how many parents would love to be in that situation? <laughs> yes. Have twins and know your college is being paid for. That, that's a very true yeah. statement. I, called, and it, I didn't think it from the mom and dad's perspective of yeah. financial assistance. I, I've called John Cook and told him I have two young boys. If there's any way that he can work them in early. Trying to figure something that's out. Right. <laughs> block back. Big block. Spa stat. Organzali Eaton with the block. Right down the middle. Katie with the big swing. Nice dig. Kill by Michelle Pettit from the left side. Pettit with her second kill of the match. Crusaders now up by four. And Brent Egbert's taking a timeout. It's all even at a set apiece. Crusaders by four in the third. NET sports coverage of the 2009 NSAA High School Volleyball Championships is brought to you by these proud sponsors, NPPD, Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. By the Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nebraskasoybeans.org.
and by Time Warner Cable, providing coverage of local high school sporting events and activities on Nebraska On Demand, Channel 101. Well, it's a full day of state championships here at the Coliseum. Take a look at what's uh, already happened and what is coming up. You see SCOTUS won, really Wallback won. This battle continues at a set of piece. And then later today, we have Aquinas taking on Sandy Creek in the C2 battle. Gross swept Pius last night, three-time defending champ. They'll take on Northwest, which is back in it once again. And then to end the day, in class D1, it's a battle between Exeter Milligan and Howells, the Timberwolves and the Bobcats. So great day of volleyball for you. Glad you could join us. Hope you continue to stay with us throughout the day on NET as we bring you state championship action from the Coliseum in Nebraska High School of Volleyball. 11-7 Crusaders. That goes off of the hand of Orgazali Eaton and out of bounds. Now 11-8. So Gwen Egbert got what she wanted out of that timeout, which is stop the run of Marion. Get the serve back. Here's Kelly Hunter. On the slide. Touch and a kill. Great slide run by Spostad. Spostad likes to come around on that slide. She comes around here and again catches the hands of the blockers. Set behind her to Stoyak. Block back. Middle of Spostat miscommunication, but great coverage by Mandolfo in the barrel. And another great up by Kate Elman. Outside tip. Boy, good decision. Rolfson now with 11. Katie Rolfson makes a great decision, mixing it up. Tip shot. And they're going to call a carry because Gwen's talking about it. And they gave the point to the Crusaders. So Gwen wanted clarification, so they must have said she carried it. So it was sat in her hand too long as she held up there in that tip shot. That time she blasts away and gets sent right back at her. Spostat with the block. Andre Spostat was right there. She knew that Rolfson was coming hard and aggressive, but she's strong and was ready for her. Egbert wants a timeout again. Down by six in set number three. 14-8. NET coverage of the 2009 NSAA High School Volleyball Championships is brought to you in part by U.S. Bank, committed to customer service through performance, products, and people. U.S. Bank, proud sponsor of the Nebraska School Activities Association, member FBIC. By Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska, one less thing to worry about. And by Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, grants, and college planning services. Well, it is the State Volleyball Championships, Marion Crusaders, and the Papillion La Vista South Titans, all even at one set apiece. We are in the third set. Crusaders, Marion on top, 14-8 in the third. There's Kate Elman getting ready to serve for Marion. Elman, a 5-6 sophomore defensive specialist. Big serve, you can see the Titans getting together, communicating that serve received. They're communicating who's taking what. There's just um, just a lack of communication there. Serve received, you got to do that first. Right away, Egbert pulls Katie Rolfson to have a chat with her on the bench. And I think the important thing there is you're a passer first before you can go out and swing at that ball. And so I think that's what she's telling her. You know, we got to have that ball up in the hands of our setter. Then you go out, bust out hard. Well, a good swing by Spostat. Mm -hmm. Nice dig. McCormick blocked back. Big block by Taylor Wynn. Point for the Titans. 
here you get a chance to again blockers are right there again great penetration across the net great setup all the things that make for the perfect block still a six point advantage for the Crusaders on the slide punched over by Spasta goes back to Stoyak middle touch the touch called, so the kill goes to Spostat. Spostat worked very hard in that transition also to get in for that quick attack. Whenever you run a slide around the backside as a middle, that means you got to really work hard to get back in and block, particularly if the opponent is set in the other pin. She does a great job. Outside Wolfson. Good dig by Elman. Free ball. Outside. Right between the block, didn't close fast enough, and Rolfson put it down. Hole, and she found it, puts it in, buries it to the floor. Defense, you can see they're right there, but again, those spaces that was in between them, where the ball falls, that's a block zone. They should have taken that out for her. Over Zali Eaton. Big swing there by Ogazali Eaton. She gets it off the net, drives hard into that ball. Very aggressive with that swing. 17-10. Crusaders cruising here in set number three. Wilson's serve is wide. Back into the match for the Titans. Comes Kirsten Hudgens. She'll go back to serve. Jumps her. Good pass. Great set from basically a squatted position there by William Wilson. And right down the middle, down the pipe, comes Rolfson with another kill. That's 13 for Amber Rolfson. Slide. Swing is long. Ellie Pesavento just long with the swing, and now Titans back to within four. You to feel a little bit of momentum shifting here. Getting just some unforced stairs. Boy, what an off, mm -hmm. off the tape. Good work by Mandolfo to keep it alive. Tip try. Net play there, and another good up by Mandolfo. Boy, she's a tough little girl. She's definitely working hard out there. And Rolfson delivers that one. 14 kills now for Amber Rolfson. And Rochelle Rolfs this time will take the timeout as the Titans pull back to within three. What a great tradition Omaha Marion has. Michelle Rolfs in her 21st year as the head coach. 540 wins overall and 16 trips with their last state title back in 1999. No doubt she's going to want a copy of today's game and you can get one too. It's available on DVD for $19.95 plus shipping and handling. To order it, you can call 800-868-1868 or go to netnebraska.org forward slash sports and please be sure to specify your school or your class when you order it by phone. Once again, that DVD, 1995. Give us a call at the number on your screen. Get your copy. It will last a lifetime of the high school championships. So let's see what Rochelle Rolfs was run through with her Marion squad during that last time out. Marion comes in, not only ranked number one in the state of Nebraska, but in the latest prepvolleyball.com rankings, Marion is ranked number 15 nationally. Wow. So once again, Nebraska would have a team in the top 20 nationally. Of course, completed La Vista last year, finished in the top 10. That team led by Gina Mancuso. 
And that also says, too, this state, the level that this state is uh, one of the top in the nation. You know, we have so many strong players coming out of this state. We are seeing several of them in the, in the state championship matches. But this tournament is one of the elite, too. I mean, across the country. Great dig. Jordan Wilson there. That's blocked back. Good coverage. Go back to Siegman. Siegman with the kill. Lauren Siegman now with five. Great swing there by Siegman. Great set decision by Wilson. Working pin to pin, spreading the offense out. Nineteen fifteen Crusaders up by four. As we near the crucial 20 point mark for either team. Finishing game from 20 on, so important. That swing wide, no touch. Amber Rolfson trying to get a big swing here, trying to be aggressive. Wants the ball back in her teammates' hands. They move their serve receive, now push her back to the outside. They had her in serve receive the other side, push her back to the outside. Just long. Swing by. Siegman. Just a little bit long on that swing on the backside. A crucial point of the game now for the Titans. Cut that gap before they can side out their way to the set. Block back. Four hits into the net. Great shot earlier on that um, ball by uh, Michelle Pettit. Nice cut shot, really did a great job controlling the ball. Jump serve Mandolfo in the net. You see that a little too far out in front of her, didn't give her enough lift, couldn't get to that ball quick enough to keep it up and go over. Side into the net. Michelle Pettit swing. Getting contact point really critical. They need to keep that hand high on that contact. When you're pushing tempo too, um, Wilson needs to make sure she keeps it up there so they can extend after at the ball. Overpass. Katie Rolfson, 13th kill. And just like that, the Titans are within two. Nicole Edgar to serve again. And kept in. Serve would have been wide, but instead it's an ace. Siegman was the primary passer there pursuing the ball. She's got to have help from her teammates. She's really focusing in on the ball. Her teammates got to communicate in or out for it. She's watching the ball. Hard for her to pick that up. Another ace. All even at 21. Just catches the tape. Those are hard balls. You just got to be balanced and react. Good pass. Sequin on the slide. Pounded. Why not? Go to Spostat. Andrea Spostat loves the slide. She's great at the slide. That's our be her best swing today. The timing, the quickness of that. She gets right through the gap. Her most powerful hit. Eight kills for Spostat on the afternoon. 22-21, Crusaders by one. In, Kelly Hunter's fifth kill comes in a big time. Big time is right. Here she comes around that backside again. Most of the swings have occurred from the left side. 22 all. Sequence slide, spots that again, touch. Kill spots that. That's nine. Big one right there. She goes right at Rolfson and just uses her. 
Bost at a 6-1 junior middle. Outside, Rolfson pounds away right into the block of Orgazali Eaton. She is out there, and she knew. You could tell Rolfson was winding up. She was coming aggressively. The block was solid. They knew they had to be. Set point, Marion. Into the net. So after dropping set number one, the number one ranked Marion Crusaders have come back and taken sets two and three by identical scores, 25-22, and they now lead it two sets to one. at the Nebraska Coliseum Class A State Championship match. Omaha Marion Crusaders have come from behind to take a two sets to one lead over the La Vista South Titans. Well, folks, tonight following the D1 Championship game, Austin City Limits continues its long-standing tradition of showcasing the best of original American music. Austin City Limits veterans and country music legends Willie Nelson and Asleep at the Wheel will join forces on stage in celebration of their new collaboration LP, Willie and the Wheel. Watch and listen tonight after the NSAA Volleyball Championships on NET1 and NETHD. Clearly a crucial set coming up here for Papillion La Vista South. The Titans trail two sets to one to send it to a fifth. They need this one. Sometimes when you got to have it, you play with a little more. Pizzazz, a you mission, your, your heart. And we have seen that. That's what the state championship is all about. I mean, players work all season to get back here. They take from where they ended last year, and this is their goal. This is the ultimate for them. And we've seen some incredible matches, some incredible plays. And just been an awesome week of great, or weekend of great volleyball. And from Marion's perspective, this has really been especially the disappointment of last season. Mm -hmm. They were upset in the semifinals by Papillion La Vista South. Brent Egbert's team knocked Marion out. It was, everybody was waiting for the big showdown last year between <laughs> Marion and Papillion La Vista. And it didn't happen because the Titans got in the way of the matchup. So. Marion has really wanted to get back to this point. 
off the top of the tape. Spostat serve falls on the Titans side for the ace. And the Crusaders have come out of the break and scored three straight. Spostat has served very well here today. And I look at her stats on the season, 45 service aces. But she's been very assertive from that service line and been very effective. Great dump. Siegman finds the spot and puts it over. She just does that so smoothly and, you know, really catches you off guard. And it didn't take long to get Gwen Egbert off her chair. Not that she's ever sitting anyway, <laughs> but no, she calls uh, a timeout there and the Crusaders are on top 4-0. I was going to say, I haven't seen her sit down the whole match. <laughs> oh, it's 4-0 Marion here in set number four, recapping what's happened to this point. The play in La Vista South, the Titans came out on fire in set number one and just took it right to the Crusaders and won 25-15. Since then, slowly the Crusaders have began to respond. Now they trailed midway through that second set, but came back and won it 25-22. And then in a tight one late, they outlasted of 25-22 in set three to take a two sets to one lead. And you talk with Michelle, Rochelle Rolfs, and Rochelle talks about this team is as tough as any team she's ever had. In fact, she says they're diehard competitors, as good as I've ever had. It's not by mistake that we win those tough matches. It's not by mistake that they can come from 14-12 down in the fifth to win a Metro title. They're and just used to being in that situation. And just how, how great is that intangible? It's that these kids come with that competitive spirit. They come with that never die, that mentality. And a lot of times you can have a team that is very skilled, very talented, but they just don't have that mental edge. She believes this squad has that mental edge and has what it takes. So Ellie Pesavento with the kill there. Kind of swiped at it on her way by. She has five kills. And finally, one put down by Stoyek to stop the run by the Crusaders to open set four. Stoyek, really, that was a big one for them. Their, their team, the Titans, really needed that ball back in their service hands. And again, a little momentum. Change things up here. Middle, tip, kept alive. On the line. <laughs> McCormick, again, I balance falling away just gets her hand on the ball and catches that line down the line they're feeling good right now you can see it just on their faces they're like I, I just have a sense just have a feeling right now 6-1 Crusaders Jordan Wilson serve what an up <laughs> Wilson got six pack but kept it alive it doesn't hurt <laughs> when it comes up. And the swing goes into the antenna. Let's take another look at that up by Jordan Wilson. She's still kind of brushing her brow again. Knocks her back. <laughs> but she's back up right in the action. Again, defense wins matches. Great plays like that. Like I said, it doesn't hurt at all when your team comes out with a win in that rally. And give some credit to Kate Elman who kept that ball alive after it was put in the face of Wilson. That time, the freshman Amber Rolfson comes through. 15th kill of the match for Amber. She's had a great match. She's played very well up front. Um, and again, just consistent. You expect that day in, day out, but sometimes you never know how a freshman might respond in this situation. And an ace. Kirsten Hutchins comes in to serve and serves up a point now 7-3. again goes right at that line again and that time wide great job by Kate Elman she followed it all the way to the line and it, and right here at, it's an advantage that outside of the court is red so when you feel you're getting to red or see that in your peripheral you know you can let that ball go now Mel McCormick to serve McCormick goes right at Rolfson on the slide Nelson couldn't get it down Sequin goes outside and hit into the antenna is Pettit. Push, again, that fast tempo ball, you got to get to that ball quick, or otherwise you're in danger of swinging at the antenna. 
Amber Rolfson now will serve. Rolfson, I've noticed, takes a lot of those with her hands and not with her arms. Not afraid to get those hands up there, anything above her. That's hard to do on defense. You've got to be very strong yeah. through the hands to be able to take those balls. Um, it allows you to play, again, a wider range, obviously, because you you don't have to have a flat platform up there. Big jump serve into the net. There's a guy we know fairly well. Hannah Worth talking with her coach, John Cook, who's in attendance watching three of his recruits. That's one nice thing they played last night right here at the Coliseum. Have the day off and the opportunity to watch some of his future players and just the great play in the state. Just long. Rolfson took a swing at it. Ten five Crusaders here in set number four. They lead it two sets to one. Great dig. Cushing is doing a great job of going for balls. Back row, the big swing, and a kill. 16 kills now for Amber Rolfson. That one out of the back row. <laughs> Kelly Hunter service error. So now back to serve Kate Elman. 5'6 sophomore. A lot of young talent on this floor. Sequins a sophomore, Elman's a sophomore. And Nails the ace. Down that line in that deep corner. Beautiful serve. That line serve, you don't get any better than that. Elman tries it again, and that time a bit wide. Can't be perfection. <laughs> Trying to be aggressive. So back into the game is Bailey Vance. Vance the junior, good serve, quick middle. No, it was a dump. Boy, what a Sneaky. great disguise. <laughs> it fooled the blockers. I think the hitter too, her hand was up and swinging and oh, it's over. She got down and just softly lifted it over right into the campfire. And they were all sitting around it watching, 13-7. Another ace. Ace that time, Spostak. Marianne's serving it. again is Spostad at the service line. Serving very tough. They're really being very accurate in their placement of the ball, putting it right in the zones they're wanting to. Largest lead of this set since it was seven to one Crusaders. Step behind her. Kill. Morgan Orgazali Eaton. And timeout by Glenn Egbert. Third kill for Orgazali Eaton. 15 7, Papillion La Vista South trailing here in set number four. And on Monday, November 30th on NET1 and NETHD, the musical version of The War of the Worlds is brought to the stage for the first time. This program is a spectacular mix of music, theater, multimedia, and visual arts on a grand scale with a full orchestra and an unforgettable Martian fighting machine. It's War of the Worlds live November 30th at 10 Central on NET1 and N-E-T-H-D. I'm writing that time down. Did you say Martian fighting machine? Yes, absolutely. War of the Worlds. Coach John Cook looks like chatting there with Corey Cooper and Hannah Worth. 
What do you think it's like if you're one of these players playing on the floor yeah. and you turn over and you look? Oh, that's Corey Cooper. That's Hannah Worth. Yes. I'm playing it. That's John Cook. Hopefully they are focused on the game and didn't even notice he was there. <laughs> that's right. Hopefully, right? Hopefully. But that's hard when you go to this timeout at side out and you they're staring you at the face. But again, how exciting. Again, fun, maybe adding a little nerves. But again, he knows. Good dig. She's, Great up, Elman. She's doing a great job in the back row. Swing there is wide. So out of the timeout, Titans with back-to-back -back points. It was seven to one. Marion led, then 15-7. That was their largest lead. Net violation called on the Titans. Marion with another point. Louis Nelson got in the net. She's working really hard to get around, um, get closed. Just a little aggressive and wasn't balanced. It's such a balanced team that Marion has this year, the Crusaders. Scoring comes from all over the floor. Siegman, McCormick, Orgazali, Eaton, Spostat, Pesavento, even Pettit is a threat at the net. When we ask Coach Rolfs, where do you go when you have to have a point? He said, I can go anywhere in the front line. I have reliable hitters anywhere, and my dump is reliable too, so I'm not afraid to let Lauren Siegman throw a dump out there when we have to have a big point. What a great feeling. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they yeah. have so many options. And again, I think the interesting thing is too how poised they are out on the floor. They keep their composure and all. And Coach Rolf is a great role model example. If you watch her on the bench and the sideline, very positive, very poised, just giving information, encouragement to her team. Players feed off of that and they feel very comfortable out there in all stressful situations and when they're doing well as well. In addition to her coaching duties, Coach Wolf also has six periods of math that she teaches at Marion. So she's demanding on the floor, and Coach teaches a very demanding course load as well. 17-11 now, Crusaders. So very problem-solving mind. Ah, there you go. Off the top of the block, and a kill by Kelly Hunter. That's her sixth kill. Hunter, as we mentioned before, playing a dual role. She sets when she's in the back row. When she's in the front row, she's hitting, getting some kills, just picking them up here and there, which is really important. The deep corner, nice serve. Sequin in the middle. Tried to put a deep corner, but just long. She's a little early on her approach. That set was a little higher than I think she anticipated, so it was kind of hanging. Wasn't a really great position to drive. On the slide, Ellie Pesavento. Pesavento, great job on the slide. She actually, most of the part runs in front of the setter. Here she comes around on the backside, executes very well. Mandolfo, good serve. Back row. Oh, a good swing. Siegman will put it back over. Outside. Swing and a miss. Michelle Pettit. Tough ball coming over his shoulder. Had to time it and get behind it. Tough ball. Just to miss. Miss, miss it. She's laughing at it. Then she goes, oh. Well, lead now down to four, 18-14. And an ace. Nicole Edgar with the ace makes it 18-15, back to within three. There's a six-point advantage. Make an eight-point advantage at 15-7. And another ace, back-to-back -back aces by Nicole Edgar. And the Titans are within two, and timeout called by Marion. Edgar's done that. She did that also in set number um, three. Came in, had that string right at the end, kind of pushed it, I believe, tied it at 22-22. So she's back there serving tough again. 
Being aggressive. 9-3 Titan run here at the Coliseum. NET coverage of the 2009 NSAA High School Volleyball Championships is brought to you in part by U.S. Bank, committed to customer service through performance, products, and people. U.S. Bank, proud sponsor of the Nebraska School Activities Association, member FBIC. By Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska, one less thing to worry about. And by Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, grants, and college planning services. And we're back at the Nebraska Coliseum, 18-16. Both crowds on their feet. A must-win game for the Titans of Papillion La Vista South. And Siegman comes right down the middle and pounds that one home. Big swing, they come around in a cross pattern, so she comes around and cuts it right through the hole, cuts it back. Great swing. And again, exactly what you want out of a timeout when you're in the middle of watching your opponent make a run. It was 15-7 at one point. It was a 9-3 run by the Titans. The overpass put down. Spostad again. Great job again, just for the block, then reacting, getting up. Here you can see, here she comes and is back in her hands. She does a great job turning it off the outside. 10 kills by Spostad. It's a hand on it there, bump set outside. Great Locked reaction. Back. Just a great job there, by Mandolfa. Another one. <laughs> Mandolfo, another terrific dig. Tip. Great up. Marion getting to a lot of balls right now. And Mandolfo, after making a couple of great plays there, let up just a little too much into the tape. She says, I'm a defensive player. Digging balls, digging balls. She's doing a fabulous job. Kelly Hunter now to serve. They're down three. Marion trying to close it out, win a state championship right here. A little confusion on the side of the Titans. Couldn't tell if they were running the middle there. Right. And they run a uh, play there too where they run that quick as well as they run that higher ball behind. And so again, it wasn't decipherable. The both hitters trying to be aggressive. But again, communication, just some little things that are hurting them at this point. Good swing, Rolfson, Katie, just inside that back line. She has 14 kills now, her sister with 17. And just going over the block, it's tough to slow, stop or slow her down. Defense just continues to pursue, but she's being effective. Siegman quick in the middle. Into the net called. They say Spostat clipped the net. So back to within two. Here we are again. 21 19 late in the game. Two point differential and a must win for the Titans. Win couldn't handle it. Little roll shot. Mel McCormick just finding ways to get it done. Really keeping the Titans off balance. Great dig and great hustle. You saw the quickness there of Rolfson, and they're going to call a lift on Rolfson. Yeah, they, if we can see that. See, if they're calling it because they're saying it's sitting in her hand too long and that she's taking it, holding, and then changing direction. Here we'll get a chance to look at it. Mm. That maybe didn't, wasn't what it was. Yeah, it didn't look like it sat there very long. Might have missed Pretty that quick. one. In a crucial spot, 23-19 now, Marion two away. Marion hustling after it. But the kill will go to Amber Rolfson, who now has 18 kills unofficially.
And again, kills and statistics being kept here, not official. Off the top of the block, kill Mel McCormick. And now the Omaha Marion Crusaders one away from their first state championship in 10 years. The kill. Jennifer Cushing, the libero out of the back row, puts it down. 24-21. The Titans have survived one championship point. They'll need to survive three more. Championship point for the Omaha Marion Crusaders. Ace! Kirsten Hudgens with the ace on a ball that looked like it might be drifting out. You can't let it go, though. I mean, it's too tough of a ball. You got to get outside that, try and block it in. But I don't know. It was tough. <laughs> Crusaders now only up by two at 24-22. And Rochelle Rolfs will take a timeout, set up a play, try to get the side out and the point and the championship. And tell everybody, take a deep breath, OK? We're great. And you know, the thing about it, who you've seen her, she's very positive, talking to the players, keeping them very calm. And, uh, you know, who's going to stay organized here? Get, they're in the driver's seat. And we've made the comment that out of these timeouts, mm -hmm. Marion, when they needed to stop the tide, they've been able to do it. Out of the timeouts, they put together plays that have been successful. We'll see what they can do here. 24 22, Crusaders at championship point. Crusaders team last championship in volleyball came in 1999, 10 years ago. Siegman, wrist away, is wide. Surviving another championship point. The last championship point here for the Crusaders before they have to score two more. Right down the middle. They got it! <laughs> Omaha Marion, Class A state champs! the senior, Mel McCormick, right down the middle, putting it down, and the Omaha Marion Crusaders have won the Class A state title in four.
Welcome back to the Nebraska Coliseum. The Class A state championship is in the books, and it goes to the Omaha Marion Crusaders. They drop a big first set, 25-15, but come back, and in each case, in each game, they play well at the end of a match when it can matter most, and they win at 22, 22, and 23. It was just, again, a consistent play. And again, the last two sets were really, they had the lead. They had to hold off the Titans to push through and persevere to finish it off. Great match between the two of them. Well played by both squads. That's a very young Papillion La Vista South squad you're looking at right there. Three freshmen essentially in the starting lineup. The seniors on the squad, Taylor Wynn, Jennifer Cushing, for the introduction of the players and the awarding of the championship and a runner-up trophies, we're going to go down to our public address announcer. That's Steve Lemon. Here's Steve. Jay Beller from Battle Creek and U.S. Bank representative Chris Dean. Here are the awards for Class A runner-up Papillion La Vista South High School. Will head coach Gwen Egbert and your assistants please step toward the middle of the court to present the silver medals to each team member. Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Number one, Katie Ralston. Number two, Taylor Wynn. Number three, Kelly Hunter. Number four, Megan Stroyak. Number five, Amber Rolson. Number seven, Kirsten Hudgens. Number nine, Nicole Edgar. Number 10, Katie Kurtz. Number 11, Lauren Polacek. Number 12, Whitney Costell. Number 13, Rachel Nelson. Number 14, Bailey Vance. Number 15, Kylie Meinzer. And number 17, Jen Cushing. All of you are welcome to receive the runner-up trophy for your school. Congratulations, Papillion La Vista South High School. Well, we'll be back shortly and get a chance to see um, the state champions. There and we go. We have the champion. Papillion La Vista First, South, Class A runner-up. We have a special award for you. Now, Coach, hand out the gold medal to your championship team members. Number one, Jordan Wilson. Number two, Molly Pettit. Number three, Lauren Seekman. Number four, Kate Elman. Number five, Julianne Mendolfo. Number six, Mel McCormick. Number seven, Morgan Ogersali Eaton. Number eight, Freddy Fuxa. Number nine, Andrea Spostad. Number 10, Ellie Pesavento.
Number 11, Maggie Emoti. Number 12, Michelle Pettit. Number 13, Maggie Hine. And number 14, Ashley Jensen. And now for these outstanding athletes in their school, here is the 2009 Class A State Volleyball Championship Trophy. Congratulations, Omaha Marion High School. So the Omaha Marion Crusaders take the Class A State Championship, the first championship in volleyball for the school since 1999. Congratulations to the Crusaders. When we come back, we'll take a look at the highlights, wrap it up here from the athletes, and also check out the stats. Stay with us on NET. Welcome back to the Nebraska Coliseum. The Class A State Championship won by the Omaha Marion Crusaders. They finished the year now 42-1. and They play in La Vista South. The Titans finish second in the state. They go to 36-5 and on the season. Three of those five losses. Now four of those five losses coming at the hands of the Marion Crusaders. Well, for more with the champs, let's go down to Rachel Schwartz. Rachel. Thanks, Larry. I am here with Marion coach Rochelle Ross. And you guys played a tremendous match tonight. After that first game, what did you tell the girls that made them come back so fired up? Well, we talked about just relaxing and playing how they had. They've won 41 matches this year before today and um, just kind of getting into the rhythm of what they do well, um, both offensively and defensively. 
That's great. And how do you, you do such a good job coaching them because they're always so level-headed every single year. And how do you do that? Well, this year, this group was the at their best when they were relaxed and um, just playing lighthearted and not getting too stressed about things. And so we always just talked about staying relaxed, taking one point at a time and, and blowing off their errors so they have a chance to make the next great play. Wow, you did a great job. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right, next up we are going to have Julian Mendelfo, who is the libero for the Marion team. And what a defensive performance you had tonight. It was amazing to watch you. You had such energy out there. And how do you feel right now? I can't even describe how I feel right now. I've been waiting for this moment for four years and finally got it. That's awesome. OK, so you have to tell me, what do you do on defense when you know you see a big hitter coming at you? What's your game plan? Well, Mr. Wolf's always taught me to just watch their hips. And I did that this game. And I was there right where the ball was every single time. And that you were. Great job. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to hear from um, Andrea Spostat, who is a middle blocker, and she had a fantastic game tonight. Um, she really held the Papillion South team down. All right, so tell me, how are you feeling right now? I am feeling overwhelmed and just amazing. This is the best feeling in the world. <laughs> is it? Well, what could possibly top that? Absolutely nothing. It, nothing at all. <laughs> this is just so amazing. All right, well, thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you. Okay, next up we have Lauren Siegman, who is a setter for Marion slash hitter slash kind of just a utility player. Okay, so how did it feel to play on your future home court? It's the best feeling in the world. It felt so good and I just can't, nothing else describes it. Just amazing. That's awesome. And you are a very versatile player. You know, you go out there, you hit, you dig, you set. And how do you think that's going to help you in your future? Well, I think as a setter, you need to be able to do a lot of things. And I think it just, it's good to be able to hit. And if someone's not doing their job, I can step in. And I don't know. <laughs> well, awesome. And what do you, what was the most, the play that you remember most? Um, Probably when Drea stuff blocked one of the twins. That felt felt amazing, even from me. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations, <laughs> you. Lauren. You did a great job tonight. Back to you, Larry. All right, thanks very much, Rachel. Appreciate it. So the Marion Crusaders, state champs in Class A. We'll wrap it all up when we come back on NET Sports. <laughs> 